Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. That's really cool. A square and a circle are inscribed in the region between two quarter circles with radius one as shown. Find the radius of the circle. At this point, you can just go ahead and pause the video and try this problem first. Okay, now we need to find the radius of the circle, but we need to find the side length for the square as well. So let's go ahead and do that first. And let me make some connections here. So I'm going to start here and connect these two. All right, that's the first connection. And then I will be making another one, but I think for this one, this should be good enough. All right, so let's go ahead and work on this. So what is the side length for the square? Let's call that X, okay? So this will be X as well. And what am I supposed to do here? Find X, right? Obviously, okay. Do we know this length? That is critical, right? And what about the hypotenuse? Well, this is the radius, isn't it? Okay, since that's the radius of the, or, or one of the quarter circles, then it should be one. Okay, so I know the hypotenuse. This is a right triangle. So this is a triangle I'm talking about, right? Okay. So the biggest question here is then, what is the base, right? To find the base in terms of X or any other way, numerically, we need to do something. What are, what are we supposed to do? Well, this is also the radius of the quarter circle, isn't it? Okay. It's the other one. So it's one. Good. Does that help us? Absolutely. Why? Because we're going to be using symmetry here, right? How do we use symmetry? Well, if you call this piece A, this is also going to be A from symmetry. Now we can find A in terms of X. Okay, let's go ahead and work it out. What am I supposed to do? I have A plus X plus A, A plus X plus A equals one. Beautiful. And I'm trying to solve for a, so let's go ahead and do that. 2a is equal to 1 minus x. So from here, what am I getting? a is equal to 1 minus x divided by 2. Beautiful. So I got a in terms of x. How is that going to help me? Well, I do need the base of this right triangle that I shaded. And the base is actually x plus a. So... So my equation is going to look like this then, right? Okay. I will have x plus a quantity squared plus x squared is equal to the hypotenuse, which is 1, right? Again, this is the hypotenuse, right? That length is going to be the hypotenuse, which is the radius of the quarter circle. Therefore, it's 1. Okay. Now, either before or after, but I'll probably do it before, you can replace a with 1 minus x over 2. And if you do that, you'll be getting x plus 1 minus x over 2. And that is going to equal 2x plus 1 minus x over 2. And that should be x plus 1 over 2. Awesome. So this is going to be x plus 1 over 2 because that's where that comes from. So I started off with x plus a. And this is equal to x plus a. Okay, so let's replace x plus a with x plus 1 over 2. A lot of replacements, right? We're using substitution like crazy. x plus 1 over 2 squared plus x squared equals 1. Now, this should be an easy equation, right? Well, first of all, it's quadratic. Nice, so we can use the formula. So let's go ahead and expand it. And then we'll go back. Once we find x, what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and find the radius. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So if you expand this, you're going to get x squared plus 2x plus 1 divided by 4 plus x squared equals 1. Let's go ahead and multiply everything by 4. That's going to simplify a great deal. Plus 4x squared is equal to 4. Beautiful. Now let's go ahead and combine like terms and put everything on the left-hand side. 5x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Okay. One thing to note about this equation. Absolutely, you can use the quadratic formula, so on and so forth. But if you notice that this is factorable, we can also do this by factoring. I think it's an important thing to talk about. Well, how do I know it's factorable? Well, I do see that the 5 
plus the negative 3 gives me a 2. What's that supposed to mean? Okay, the coefficient of the x terms with even powers, because this is x to the power 0, remember? Right? Okay, there's a hidden x to the power 0 there. So the terms with even powers, the coefficients add up to 2, and the coefficient for the odd powers is also 2. So those sums are equal. What is that supposed to mean? It means that x equals negative 1 is a solution. That would be a good thing to know because when you're looking at a polynomial, if you know immediately, oh, x equals negative 1 is a solution, you know that x plus 1 is a factor. And what do we know about x equals 1? If the sum of the coefficients, all the coefficients are equal to 0, then that means x equals 1 is a solution. Okay? So evens and odds kind of nicely balance out. Okay, cool. You could also check that by substituting negative 1 into the equation, and that would check. Anyway, so we know now that x plus 1 is a factor, so the other factor should be very easy to deduce, because then I would need a 5x here, and definitely I would need a negative 3 here to get the constant term. So what is that supposed to mean? Well, this means that I got all the solutions. Beautiful. But it's also important to check this just to make sure that we're getting, doing the right thing. If you go out and distribute, you get 5x squared minus 3x plus 5x, which gives you 2x, and then that's, don't worry about it, that's not x, it's just x to the power 0, which is 1, uh, and you get the constant from here. Look, 1 times negative 3 is equal to negative 3. So everything checks out. Beautiful. If you use the quadratic formula, you would get the exact same thing. What would you get? You would get two solutions, one of which would be x equals negative 1, and the other x equals 3 over 5. But we can take negative 1. Why can't we take it? Because x is the side length of the square, so there's no way x can be negative, right? Okay, so we're going to reject that solution, and we knew that there, was, there were going to be uh, two solutions, and one of them is negative because of the product, but that's basically not going to count. Okay, so that means that x equals 3 over 5. Beautiful. So the side length for my square, which was inscribed between the two quarter circles, is 3 over 5. Now, how can I use that to find the radius of the circle? So, we're going to go back, take this x value, and we'll make more connections. Okay, let's go back here, and then we're going to go ahead and work out the side length, or we're going to use the side length to find the radius. Okay, so let me go ahead and do some cleaning here, because I'm not going to need these anymore, right? So let's go ahead and clean this up. All right, and then probably this space as well, and if needed, more space. Okay, so let's go ahead and make new connections here. What connections do I need? Well, definitely, is if you're trying to find the radius of a circle, then you should definitely connect the center of the circle to the center of the quarter circle. If you connect the two centers, you're going to get very useful information. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so... That is one connection, just a little bit short. Okay, that's my center here. That's my other center here. Awesome. Let's call this R, all right? That's my radius that I'm trying to find because I'm supposed to find the radius of the circle. Cool. Then another connection that will be helpful is going to go this way. From the center, from the center of the circle, uh -oh. from the center of the circle, it's just going to go down this way. Okay, awesome. Now, what am I getting here? All right, so this is also the radius, and this is x. Great. So I do have the height of this triangle in terms of x and r. And what about the base? Well, the base is super easy. Why? If you think about it for a minute, you'll notice that from symmetry again, look at that. Symmetry is beautiful, isn't it? So we can take advantage of symmetry because this is a midpoint from symmetry again. We have an axis of symmetry. You can draw that. It goes right through the middle. So this is supposed to be one half. Awesome. So we know the base of the triangle. And which triangle am I talking about? This one here. Okay. This is the right triangle I'll be using. So I know the base. I know the height, yep, in terms of x and r, but I know x, remember? We calculated it. So we have the x, so we have the height in terms of r. If I can get the hypotenuse in terms of r, then I'll be very happy, right? 
is there a way to do it? And the answer is yes, we can do that. Okay, how do we do that? Well, if you consider that this is the radius of the quarter circle, which is 1, which is the whole thing, right? Then if you subtract r, then you'll be getting 1 minus r for the hypotenuse, right? The hypotenuse of this shaded triangle, which is a right triangle, is going to be 1 minus r. Beautiful. Then we can just set up our equation. Let's go ahead and do that. What is my equation? Uh, maybe use a different color here. Okay, here we go. So, my equation looks like this. 1 half squared plus x plus r squared equals 1 minus r quantity squared. Awesome. Well, I do know that x is equal to 3 over 5 because we found it, right? Awesome. Then I can do the replacements. 1 fourth. This is going to be r plus 3 over 5 squared. And that's going to equal 1 minus r quantity squared. Awesome. Let's go ahead and expand this and find r from here. And I have some good news for you. What are they? Well, we're not even going to solve a complicated equation. We're not even needing to solve a quadratic, right? Because what's going to happen is that from here, you're going to get a real simple equation. Why is that so? You'll see in a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and work this out. We have one fourth, okay, plus r squared plus six over five r plus nine over twenty five is equal to one minus two r plus r squared. The reason why we get a nicer equation is because r squared cancels out, and since r squared cancels out, I end up with what? I end up with a linear equation. Awesome. So let's go ahead and add 2r. I have 2r plus 6 over 5r. If you add these two and then you're going to subtract them. So let's go ahead and do, do it all together. We're going to subtract from 1, 1 fourth and 9 over 25. Awesome. So we're going to have to deal with fractions, but no big deal. If you want to simplify stuff, you can just go ahead and multiply both sides by 100, which is the least common denominator, okay? You can do that as well. So let's go ahead and do it. If you multiply both sides by, let's see, by 100, then we're going to be getting 200R plus... Now, 5 goes into 120 times. 20 times 6 is 120R. This is going to be 100. This is going to be a 25. And this is going to be 4 times 9, which is 36. I mean, I could have made a common denominator. It would be the same thing. But I just like doing it this way. Okay. Now, we have an interesting result. 200 plus 100 is 320R. And 100 minus 25 is 75. 75 minus 36 is 39. Interesting. Such an interesting result, right, for the radius. Okay, cool. So then the radius is going to be, you can do a little bit more cleaning here. All right. So the radius is going to be then 39 over 320. Is there a way to simplify this? Well, 39 has 3 and 13 in the prime factorization. 320 doesn't have that, only 2s and 5s, so no common factors. That's it for the radius. So it's a, this is slightly bigger than 1 tenth. And I think it makes sense. Okay, so that's our solution and it's valid. So the radius of the circle, this tiny circle that we've been looking for, is 39 over 320. Okay, all right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't done so. And I will see you in the next video. And from now on, you're going to be seeing more radical equations. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.